Well, look who decided to show up today. The day lilies are out in full bloom. Aren't they pretty? I think this is perfect timing to do a day lily tutorial. Yes, we have some that aren't bloomed. We have that are bloomed. You can see the stamen in the middle. Very pretty. And the ones that haven't bloomed yet. These are on the side of my yard. Not very glamorous over here, but very pretty nonetheless. So let's get started with this tutorial. We're gonna go over step by step and how to paint these and draw them and see what you come up with. So let's get started. All right, guys, I'm gonna go over my supplies. I have a piece of Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. This is the nine by 12 pad here. My paints and my palette, as you, I'll go over them as I use them. I'll how, I always have in the description box, you hit the words show more over here and it drops down and all the description, all the supplies, all links to buying the supplies are there. What not, I have water jars up here, you can't really see, because I can't fit everything in. Uh, I'll be working with many brushes today, some bigger brushes, smaller brushes. I might use this Princeton 10 Neptune series, maybe the Grumbacker, who knows, maybe the Princeton 8 Long Run. <clears throat> I always talk about them as I use them. I have a reference photo here, I'm going to have like side by side so you can see. This is a photograph I took of day lilies, as you can see from the beginning video, on my side of my yard. Um, I hate when I print out sometimes, it doesn't come out as pretty, but... We're just going to, I kind of just sketched in loosely how they look. If you look at daylilies, I printed out this. You can just go online. You can see how they kind of like really crinkled edges, you know, on the petals. You know, you get like six petals here and the stamens in the middle, kind of like, you know, lilies. And they're orange and bright orange and they're a little deeper in here. And you get this nice line inside. Now these are inside ones. Mine are like on the side. So you're going to see half petals kind of folded like this here, but that's how they look. And we're just going to do a loose kind of like uh, painting here today. Nothing really serious, just having fun. So I've kind of lightly sketched in where I want paint to go and how I want to look. So I just want to just start to paint kind of really loose. Uh, I'm just going to grab the, like I said, Princeton 10 Neptune series round. Get this wet. I'm going to grab some of my Cadmium Yellow Deep. This is whole Holbein paint, by the way. Um, I like Holbein. I'm gonna put some over here for my green. So I got the cabin yellow deep. I do have a brilliant orange. Um, I can find the brilliant orange now. Of course, when I'm talking to you, I can't find it. Oh, here it is. So that make my, you could make the orange or you can just buy this too, which is a great, really great color. It's super intense orange. So it's a little cheat. Um, but you can make the orange with, Magenta and clean up my brush and grab some yellow. Make a nice, it's like a ready orange here. Grab a little yellow. So, this is more of a natural looking orange, which you see in the day lily. It, can have, it has a little coral to it in the photograph. I, like the photograph is not going to be like it is outside. Sometimes it's better to be outside. So, you can add a little magenta over here and a little yellow and you get that corally kind of pink color. We're going to play around with all these different colors here. And I'm going to grab this peacock blue and make a nice pretty green. So I like to have the colors already mixed. I might add a little more yellow to that so I got to clean up my brush. Oops. Got this bright green because you see all those bright greens. And we can make some darker ones back here. Take that same green, add some Prussian blue to it. I'm going to grab some Prussian blue. Get a deeper green. I'll add a little burnt number. I'm going to have to grab some more of that. Makes a nice dark green. So we get all these colors to play with. So I'm going to clean up my brush completely. And I'm just going to grab some of this orange color here. Pretty wet on wet. I'm just going to stop painting. Now see, I'm just under here. It's more of a yellow going into orange, and then you get the orange up here. You could start off by just grabbing some yellow, mix with a little orange, kind of leading that in there. Right, and then you add the orange. I'm just doing this really loose. I'm gonna grab some of this orange. I'm just gonna take the brush, kind of push it around like that. This curvature here 
and you can bend it down a little more with this tip. It's got a great tip on this. Can add a little of this pink kind of color tone to it. See? And it's going to dry lighter than that. And again, I'm just going to go bend it, push the brush down, kind of bend. I'm going to use the brush to our advantage. Just like that. And again, wiggle and bend down. Just kind of bending the brush and moving it. This one underneath. Like I said, I can grab some of this brilliant orange I have here, just a little bit, it's a little bright. Kind of push that color in there. I'm gonna to wait to do the front leaf in a bit. I can still work on this one here. This one you get to see these two bended leaves. A little yellow here. Again, they're just going like this one. And this one's folded on top. So you got some darker orange going here. Add some yellow. And then I'll do the top. It's a little folded. It has that center pale orange kind of color. So what you can do is you paint the pale orange first. You know, with that petal kind of wiggle that edge of it. And then we're going to go back over it with the dark color. So you see the pale orange in the crease with that line right here. There's a line right there. Same thing with the ones back here. I'm going to paint that pale tone. And I'll go back in. This one doesn't really have it. It has this funky little wiggle to it. And then here. Gonna add a little bit of that pink color. Kind of looks like coral. See that? And then we just have this little stick, and then a couple little ones sticking out here. Those are the stamens. All right. This one's kind of a little dry now. So again, we can put that pale tone, pale, excuse me, pale tone in, and then we're gonna go in later and add the darker tone. It's just pretty simple, it's just this bending, twisting. I didn't put this one in. Now for these unopened one, you can see it's very yellow with some green in there. So we can kind of put in just a wash of yellow and then add a little bit of green well, it's wet on wet. See, I'm kind of blending that in at the same time. If you squint your eye, you can see it's a little darker here. We can go back over that. And you can work the same way this way. You can do some green. It's bright green. Clear off the brush, add a little yellow. Some bright yellow on the side. So they have these like oval, oval kind of shapes to them. And then it goes into a nice green stem where it meets this one. And we get a couple of them from here. And just go loose down here. Just using my tip. A little guide, my pinky hold it up like this. And go like that. Just going really loose. And I'm going to grab that same color and put in the stem for this one. And then we have some more of those unopened ones branching off from this one. And some of these unopened ones, a little more orange in color because they are getting ready to open. So we can put one of those orange ones, a little more orange tone with a little green, just washing a little orange, just like that. While it's still damp, I can add a little green to it. You see there's a line right in the center here. We'll add that. We, want to add it when, we don't want to add it when it's damp because it's going to just bleed. So while the screen is still here, we're going to kind of use it to make the little the leaves that go with this. This is just pushing down, kind of crazy leaves. You see them kind of flowing everywhere, going this way and that way. 
just following the movements and some of them are darker so I'm gonna add that darker green add some of that dark green into the stems actually just really going loose here See? just this upward movement and over and down and some like this you get that wave it looks like a wave right you can take artistic liberty it doesn't have to look exactly like the picture so I'm adding a little few greens over here grabbing some light greens it's kind of going crazy over here and then the dark greens because that's how it kind of looks right I don't want to get too crazy with that so now we're going to go back to the areas here that we missed with that darker pretty kind of orangey tone and I'm going to go in here just fill that in gets a little darker in here just a little dark pinkish orange the stamens use the tip of this I didn't even grab a smaller brush, I just used this brush the whole time. Just taking the tip, kind of pushing out the paint. Those stamens right there. I do look a little pointy, so I'm gonna add some kind of like dots on top. And there was one just kind of sticking way back here. Right? And now we're gonna go back into our petal and put the darker tone with this light leaving that lighter shade in the middle oops see that one I kind of overcrowded and got that one out so I can just kind of lift it out with the paintbrush I'm just gonna grab this Princeton brush and I'm lifting up the paint if it doesn't come up you can always just take a paper towel and force it up there we go and then you can go back in <laughs> And fix it so you have that line so you want to keep that line in there <laughs> it happens this is what I'm saying it happens to everybody then here we're gonna take these darker tones and kind of just push them from the center going outward and leaving that light tone again in the middle grabbing some deeper orange wiggling it this is a little deeper on the edge. See how we're getting there? And we're going to do the same thing with the ones here. These ones have a little more streaks in them, so we're just going to put these little streaks going downward. And then this one you can see that has the streaks with the light center little streaks get that light center same thing with this one keep that light center and you can add I'm adding cadmium um, magenta brilliant orange makes a really deep orange or yellow get that deeper color you see kind of in here it's like a red almost just like that there's a few streaks underneath here you can get technical if you want but we want this loose style so I'm not gonna get technical I'm gonna go back to these guys Getting a nice orange, water it down. I always tap it on the paper towel. Tap, tap, tap. And you can put that line, that green line. And go back in, water this color that I made, and just put some of that orange on either side of that line. Try not to hit that line. You can grab a little yellow, kind of bleed that in too. 
it's just just combination of adding some yellow orange just gonna bleed in a little bit of dark orange and that pale green that we created earlier I got a little muddy so you want to go back and just brighten it up I have the yellow and the peacock and get that bright green again. So you're just kind of washing in the collar. This one kind of, you take that green and you can do the streaks. Just little lines going down. Same thing here. Maybe add a little darker green. There's a distinct line in here. Now I did some, there were little ones over here that I didn't do. Little ones that weren't finished. Again, you can also just blend in some pretty orange in here also. It's not gonna look exactly like the picture and it doesn't have to. You know what it is. You obviously know what this is, right? Gonna add a little more yellow in here. And just move this around. I'll get one leaf that I didn't have back here. This petal. Voila. So this was didn't take that long at all. And you have this pretty light painting. You know, once you get that down, you can go back and do all your little tweaks adding in some deeper tones of this green. Get real technical if you want to, but just to get the initial flower down and leaves, you can go right back on top of these. Put that darker tone in. You know, I can add some more stuff back here that I didn't add. Getting this darker green tone up into the stems here. You see, it will dry lighter, so you're going to have to keep adding if it wasn't dark enough. And less water will make it more concentrated color. And um, I use Holbein paints because the pigmentation of the colors here is so intense. They're fabulous. Um, other people might want to use Winsor Newton or some other brands, but I love, I love Holbein gouache, so I love Holbein watercolor. <laughs> I'm prejudiced that way. And I'm sorry, it's just going to be biased. So it got a little muddy in here. I might want to tweak it a little bit, adding a little yellow back in here. But you just play around with it. I just wanted a really loose kind of daylily to get the feel of how they were flowing and blowing in the breeze. It didn't have to be something spectacular, you know, perfection of realism here. We're just going for the look, the feel, and that's what you want to create when you're painting. It doesn't really have a deep center in this photograph. Mine's a little darker in this one. It should be a little bit darker. You can see in the line here. You're going to play around with that. It doesn't have to look exactly like the photograph. You know, if you want the underneath part to be darker or lighter, you play around with that. I might want to take a little water, put some over here, grab a paper towel, and just lift up some of that color. So you get the distinction better. Again. Grab some more water on there. I feel like it got too muddy. There. And I might grab some brown. And just go in here a little bit. Get the center. It might be a little too dark. But I'm trying to think that this one's kind of folded. from here. And if you don't like it, <laughs> once you paint it right away, go in and just kind of just tap it out. 
it's constantly a battle, I think, sometimes. And the other one, orange. But you get the idea. You can go back in and add the little ridges. Now, I have a tutorial on daylilies that I did a while ago. I'll link it in here. Um, so you can watch that one also. Okay, so this is just a loose exercise. Now, I did use two brushes. I did use the Princeton 10 Neptune, and I did come back in and use my long round uh, number eight Princeton Velvet Touch series. Um, you know, playing around with it. See, look, I got a little boo boo there. You know how to clean those up? Take some water, go right on top of that little mark that you might have made, grab a paper towel, and lift it up. Try not to go too crazy. Just going to wiggle it, get that paint loose, and it should come up. And it's gone, like it never happened. So it does have a lot of air going into this. It's a little crazy over here, but I don't want it to be like this intense painting. I just want a really fun, pretty, you know, loose, grabbing some more green here. A little more concentrated, a little more bright. Get a couple of greens in here. You want a variety of greens always. You go back over some of the greens you had too. Just to brighten it up. So that's that, guys. Watercolor practice again. You see, I have the, um, if you're a Patreon member, I'll have this uh, reference for you to download. But you saw how I made those simple flowers. You're just kind of taking your brush and kind of bending it, twisting it, twisting it. So really, if you want to think about it, it's a V, right? If you want to draw it, it's like a V. And then you're just going to bend these little petals coming outward. You can get technical, like I showed you earlier, um, with the, the lines, the veins. That one's still wet. But you can draw all the little veins if you want to. Just download a picture of the daylilies and you'll see what I'm talking about. And I'll put that little line going in the center. See? It's just a loose daylily painting. So if you have any questions, leave in the comment section. I want you guys just to practice with your paintbrushes. You know, sometimes just going outside and looking what's around your yard. That's all you need. I mean, obviously this part is hideous with my, my house and I have my propane tank over here. But, um, you know, this is what you take, like if you're out in your yard, you take either draw or sketch it, and then you could take a photograph to get the idea of the colors if you forget it. So that's it. Um, have a great weekend, guys. Keep practicing. Practice makes perfect. You're not gonna be beautiful out of the gate. It's gonna take time. Don't get frustrated with yourself. See, these, none of these are perfect, and I kinda love it. Imperfections are fantastic, you know. That's what's great. Now take care, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.